Today on The State of Us, is artificial intelligence dumb? The future of Facebook and streaming. Welcome to The State of Us. I'm your host, Justin T. Weller, joined, of course, today by the one and only, the friendly redneck liberal and the senior resident historian here at True Chat, Mr. Lance Jackson. Today, we're looking at how Americans age 50 and up are powering growth in the streaming business. We're also going to talk about what AI still doesn't know how to do and where Facebook goes from here as Apple regulators and fickle teens are just a few of Meta's problems. Its pivot to the metaverse might not work out. We've got a lot to look at today, pretty much all of Lance's very favorite, nearest and dearest topics to his heart. But before we dive in, do we have a word of the day? We do. We have uh, um, many portentous topics to talk about today. Portentous is the word of the day. Three syllables. P-O-R-T-E-N-T-O-U-S. It is an adjective, and it means that which portends evil. And if you don't know what portends means, it means an omen or a warning foreshadowing. So we have many pretentious topics to talk about today. You you, you do some of this uh, portentious streaming, right? I do. Mm. That's how I watch my baseball games. Oh, okay. How's that go for you? Not well. No. No, because the wheel of death comes up and falls. <laughs> what is the behind. wheel of death? The wheel of death is when it spins because it's not connecting. <laughs> and that's frustrating. Oh, that is so frustrating. It's not as as nice as watching it on cable, but I can't get my favorite team or games on cable on a nightly basis, so I have to use the streaming device, which absolutely <laughs> stinks. <laughs> How often do you get the wheel of death? <laughs> oh, about three times an inning. Yeah. Yeah. How long does it last for? Anywhere from 10 seconds to two minutes to we have an error and have to totally shut it off and restart it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and which can, is now I've gone to share for our listeners what you feel when, when the wheel um, of death comes. Up. I feel like picking up the remote control <laughs> and throwing it at the quote smart TV. Mm-hmm. I did throw a um, burrito wrapper from a local Mexican restaurant uh, <laughs> at it the other night. Yeah. yeah it was empty. <laughs> okay. It was an empty well, wrapper. That's good. Yeah. Uh, but it did get thrown <laughs> and make connection with the TV because my right arm's still pretty good. <laughs> uh, Actually, I think if I could have taken a picture of it, I might get signed by my local team to – to pitch for him because I it was a pretty good fastball into the middle of the smart TV. So you stream your you stream your games to the, well you try to stream your games my sporting events yes <laughs> it, not always to a lot of success no. but but these are games you couldn't see otherwise right exactly well I'm not really getting to see them now but yes I can see them <laughs> what, as, the pieces I get to see mm-hmm, the pieces I get to see right <laughs> they're games uh, I can't get otherwise so exactly. do you use any other streaming services other uh, than for baseball um. Some Netflix. Okay. Yeah. Some Longmire. Um, yeah, occasionally. Um, most, how, how does that one go? Do you get the wheel of death much there? Um, not as often. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it, 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 it's about once a show. Okay. For about 15, 20 seconds. So wheel of death is, is less bad in that it, case. It is, yes. <laughs> uh, and what does your I've wife- I've been told if I buy more technology- Yes. That I can get the wheel of death to go away. So it's obviously a, a a plant by the companies that do streaming <laughs> to, to get, get you to buy more, more products, <laughs> to get more money out of you so that their initial products will work better. Yes. Now, <clears throat> um, the share of viewers by every other age group decreased over the most recent period, but people ages 50 to 64, mm-hmm. which I think... Lance would qualify. I, I, I fit in there, yes. A larger share of streaming time than those 35 to 49 for the first time ever, according mm-hmm. to Nielsen. Older people's adoption of streaming services from free ad-supported services to subscription offerings comes as more Gen X consumers and baby boomers part ways with their cable service. Now, you still have cable, right? I do. I'd okay. like to get rid of it, but my streaming is um, so portentous 
that I, I, I just can't pull the plug yet. I mean, I want to, I've tried, I've tried on two separate occasions in the last six months to get rid of cable. And then I have such a horrible experience with streaming that I still have the cable. Oh, well, we've talked about, um, you know, Lance does live in, in a large house in a rural area and the Wi-Fi not, might not be that great. And that would be part of the p- potential reason. Well, that would be the reason. I have, I have purchased the, the best Wi-Fi death. that is available for my <laughs> I home. I can't get anything better than no, what the I The company have. says I'm paying for, they're giving me the most that they have. One thing that streamers are interested in though, Lance, is that once older viewers start streaming, they're more likely to browse and see what else they can watch adding that older people tend to spend more time watching TV than younger people do. Young people have their phone or their device, and that's their technology of choice because it was there when they were growing up. When older people, your age group 50 to 64, TV was the new device, right? I mean, TV was the first thing I had. I remember when we got our first color TV in the house from black and white. So... That's a big deal. To us, right. But to us, then, the TV is like millennials' phone. The, what, what's next for streaming? Great. It's grown amongst all these old people. They're loving streaming. Uh, they're making the shift. But it begs the question of, there's a cap to how much streaming can grow, right? Sure. Um, just like cable TV at one point. I mean, yes, there's more people coming into the world, so there there may always be some growth, right? But the type of growth that fueled these companies' valuations, like the Netflixes of the world. I have 300 was, channels and there's nothing to watch. Right. And I've done that on Netflix. <laughs> you flip on Netflix and you go for 20 minutes and it's like, there ain't crap to watch. Oh, well, you got to let uh, Netflix's <laughs> AI get to work on you and, and find you some stuff to like. They got a new feature, Lance, where you where you say, I don't know what I want to watch, and it will tell you what you want to watch. Mm-hmm. It sounds 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 right up your alley. Oh, it does. Yes. Just no sounds, control. Mm, sounds like something and, I would and enjoy. And you can just yeah. <laughs> sit back. I'll put it down and, and let, read a book. And okay. let it put, put stuff uh, up yeah, on it. I'll, I'll, I'll turn it off and read a book. So. Consolidation is what comes to mind. And I, I've been saying this. I think we've said this on the show for a few years. There's been this expansion of streaming, right? Lots of new people using it, lots of new services. You know, Disney Plus is on the scene, Apple TV, just all these different things just keep coming, right? And at some point, it begs the question of- I don't like Apple TV. No? No, because they've taken two of my games off of my app, and I can't watch it unless I have Apple TV. Which you don't want. Right. But they tell me it's real simple to get it for free to watch the game and then get rid of it. Twice I've tried to get it and can't get it. Mm. <laughs> so I don't like Apple TV. <laughs> but what happens, you have all these different platforms. Can we really support all of them? My contention is no, I don't think so. Um, I think that part of what will happen is a redistribution back to some providers, right? And those will be the ones that are the most entrenched who produce, yes, their own content, content, but much like the original Netflix model, in addition to their own content, of course, will distribute other people's content that has been licensed. Um, I'm just not sure it's practical for them all to be able to maintain market space. And the ones that I think, you know, when you look at which ones are going to survive the longest, it's probably the ones with the staples that people have come to know and love, right? Disney has a great opportunity to stick around because they have this enormous library of things that people have come to know and love over the years, and it's a household name. And so they have all that built in. So they were kind of later to the game than everybody else, but they offered something that was familiar, right? Yeah, you don't need my VHS tapes or my DVDs anymore. You just go to Disney Plus and there's the movie that I've got back on my shelf. Correct. Yep. Um, plus everything new that Disney creates, right? You you have access to as well, all for one low low price. Uh, so you know, there's those kinds of things that I think will let it. Well, st- it's only a low price until they drive everybody else out of the market, then and then they can it raise out, it, right? Because then they can charge what they want. Exactly. Which is the ultimate plan, right? I mean, sure, that's not not going. just Disney, but everybody else. It's if you can survive through the consolidation, then you can be the big dog. So. Just a little bit about what's going on in streaming. We teased some about uh, AI there, but that's what we're talking about next because it's Lance's favorite topic. Let's talk a little bit about. I'm not the one who called it A1. So let's 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 see what uh, let's see what AI still doesn't know how to do. Keep it here on the state of us. 
and we'll be right back. So we've heard about AI, and for some people, for some people, like Lance, they may think of it as something portentous, but is it really? What does AI know? Should we be scared? Uh, Well, if you grew up with Terminator, you might be, but that's not necessarily what AI is. So, you know, we've been marveling here at some time what it can do, and if you've not been paying super close attention, you would have seen that um, you know, a month or so back, um, near the near the start of near middle of June, I think, um, there was a Google engineer who said that the company's one of the company's new language model systems um, had essentially become sentient. You know, uh, indistinguishable from a human in its capacity to create sentences and phrases from various prompts. However, the article contends that they use a relatively simple technique to do it. The model can see the first part of a text that someone has written and then try to predict which words are likely to come next. If a powerful computer does this billions of times with billions of texts generated by millions of people, the system can eventually produce a grammatical and plausible continuation to a new prompt or a question. It's natural to ask whether large language models, like the ones mentioned, are in fact smart or just double talk artists. But I think that those are the wrong questions to ask. These models are neither truly intelligent agents nor deeply or nor deceptively dumb. Intelligence and agency are the wrong categories for understanding them. So we call it artificial intelligence, but is that really what it is? And one way that he describes it, which I think is an interesting idea, or excuse me, the one way that she describes it, um, is that these AI systems are what we might call cultural technologies like writing, print, libraries, internet, search engines, or even language itself. They're new technologies for passing on information from one group of people to another. Asking whether these things are intelligent or know about the world is like asking whether the University of California's library is intelligent or whether a Google search, quote, knows the answer to your questions. But cultural technologies can be extremely powerful for good or Mm -hmm. ill. Yep. I like it because they're not intelligent. They just are another access, another way to access information. Is it easier to get information this way? Sure. Okay. But can they really solve a problem for you? As the article went on to talk about. Depends what the problem is. Exactly. So, but what constitutes intelligence? Well, by definition, intelligence is a noun. It's the ability to acquire and apply knowledge and skills. Two parts. Yes. And a computer can acquire information, but can it apply it? So, and here's, I think, where the debate comes in, right? Um, Where we stand currently is, are there AI systems that have the ability to acquire information and apply knowledge and skills using that acquired information? The, The answer is, Sometimes, sort of, right? Sort of, um, and that's why it's complicated, right? Because as the article points out, um, you know, if you if you want quick access to any random bit of information, or if you use one of these language learning models and you give it a prompt to answer a, um, you know, say, write me a sentence about, but it did that, you know, tell me about. a a cat that went for a walk, you know, give me a story. We are seeing that AI will have the ability to produce something that generally speaking, you know, is fairly indistinguishable from what a person would um, provide. And what do we mean by that? It means that if you show a human, the thing the AI did and the thing that another human wrote, and you do that with a bunch of different people and you aggregate all the data, it's becoming very close to where there is no statistical difference between what we identify as AI and what we identify as human. So in that sense, 
it has acquired information and it is applying that uh, acquired knowledge and skills to create a thing. Hence, by that definition, it is intelligent. However, and then the article goes on to talk about, right, but what about to, the what about the true test of intelligence or the uh, Turing test? Right, Alan Turing in 1950 suggested that if you couldn't tell the difference in a typed conversation between a person and a computer, then the computer might keyword there qualify as intelligence, which is what we just talked about. But Turing also proposed a more stringent test. For true intelligence, a computer should not only be able to talk about the world like a human, it should be able to learn about the world like a human child. So in the person who, uh, in in this doctor who is a professor of psychology at the University of California, um, in their lab, they created a new online environment to implement the second Turing test, an equal playing field for children and AI systems. They showed four-year-olds on-screen machines that would light up when you put some combination of virtual blocks on them, but not others. Different machines worked in different ways. The children had to figure out how the machines worked and say what to do to make them light up. The four-year-olds experimented, and after a few trials, they got the right answer. Then we gave the state-of-the-art AI systems the same problem. The language models got a script that described each event the children saw, and then we asked them to answer the same questions we asked the kids. We thought the AI systems might be able to extract the right answer to this simple problem from all those billions of earlier words they had learned. But nobody in those giant text databases had seen our virtual colored block machines before. In fact, the systems bombed. Some other recent experiments had similar results. For all of AI's articulate speech, it can't seem to solve cause and effect problems. And that's probably because if you want to solve a new problem, Googling it or going to the library may be a first step, but ultimately you have to experiment the way children did. GPT-3, which is one of these AI systems, can tell you what the most likely outcome of a story will be. But innovation, even for four-year-olds, depends on the surprising and unexpected, on discovering unlikely outcomes, not predictable ones. There you have it. Computer's not as smart as a four-year-old. Depends on what you're asking. Exactly, right? But that... If you want the answer to something predictable, right? If you want the answer to something that requires quick accumulation of facts and the ability to relay those facts into a single... Uh, computation or a single answer. Machines are arriving at the point where they will do that and probably will continue to do that better than people can. However, if you want to decode a problem that has not yet been solved, and specifically if the problem is not strictly mathematical or scientific based, right, but involves some degree of spatial sense um, and some understanding of something for which a computer does not yet have a knowledge base, the human far surpasses the computer in that capacity. And here's where it becomes portentous because then who's to say what they what the computer comes up with is good for humankind? Because what's it basing all of its reasoning on? Whatever is fed into it. Well, and what's fed into it, who is feeding it? Exactly. <laughs> the who is very important. Just is like it, who is raising a child, right? Is Exactly. But I mean, is it being used for good or is it being used for evil? Just like Socrates said about writing, right? Socrates said writing was evil in his time because it could be used to write things that weren't true. And that people might assume that it was true just because it was written down. Exactly. Same thing. Oh, I found this on the internet. So it's I mean, it's the same argument and we've, we've seen it happen. And as a teacher, I've had to stop kids and say, no. Well, yeah, but here's a report. You can write anything down. It's, it's from a doctor. See, it says there's a doctor in his name, and he says the earth is flat. And he says there is no such thing as global warming. And then it becomes fact that the earth is flat because the computer said it. AI said it. And the AI picked up on it, was given all these databases, and in that database was information like this. And so then it says, yeah, well, you don't have to – you can't take a ship and go around because you're going to fall off the edge because the information that was fed to the computer, to the artificial intelligent device, said that the earth was flat. So I just asked Google, Lance, just for the fun of it, 
is the earth flat? And I've put the answer up on the screen. Google tells you in its feedback, no, the earth is roughly a sphere. Good. <laughs> now? What else do you want to ask Google? I don't ask want to it, ask Google anything. Ask it something harder. Let's I see how it does. <laughs> um... Can't be fact based because see it'll it'll probably get you every time on a on a question of fact or history. How do we solve the Russian Ukraine war? Ooh. <laughs> okay. So su not surprisingly, uh, Google does not have a direct answer mm. for that. It the first thing it provides is an opinion piece from Politico written by a human uh -huh. <laughs> as a potential answer. Okay. The other thing is it it attempts to give you questions that it think you might be asking. Uh -huh. So it wants to know what is the do what is the U.S. doing to help Ukraine. Uh -huh. It can give you mm -hmm. that answer. It's not what I want. I wanted to solve the problem. What can we do to help Ukraine? It yeah. has that answer. How can NATO help Ukraine? Right. Is Britain helping Ukraine? What has the U.S. done for Ukraine? Mm -hmm. Who would win? a war between the U.S. and or Ukraine and or Russia and the U.S. How do we donate to Ukraine? So again, those are all answers, right, that require that there's a specific mm -hmm. answer to those things. Right. <laughs> but when you asked it a question about an opinion, it's I uh, right. can't help you do with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so a cloudless sky in the daytime appears blue to the human eye, according to Google. It can tell you that. I don't but care. It's going to have difficulty telling you um, why does that cloud look like a zebra, you know? And I, that's, I guess, the point we're trying to illustrate is, so is the question that was posed in the title of the show is, is AI, artificial intelligence, dumb? It depends on what you're asking it, right? Um, it depends greatly on what you're asking it. And also, I think the article pointed out a huge thing, which is very important because you talked about the difference between the good and the evil, right? Agency. This, to me, is the thing that it hasn't yet cracked. Does it have the ability to accumulate a huge mass amount of information to turn out things at a pace faster than people can, especially when it deals with regurgitation of information? Absolutely. Um, does it have the ability to decide right from wrong? Can it develop a moral compass? Well, there are some people out there that would contend, yes, but how is it going to develop that moral compass? Well, it's going to develop it based on information created by humans. So the flaw here, and this is the fear, right? And this is something we've seen with certain AI systems, is that the AI systems end up having prejudice built into them. Um, and that could be, it could be racial. Um, it could be derived based off of one's gender. It could be uh, derived based off of one's age. Um, and these are not things, it's not like the AI system said, oh, gee, you know, I want to be racist. The AI system didn't decide to do that. But the information that it was given to learn off of had it develop biases, which to no fault of its own, it's what it learned. And in many ways, people are not necessarily quote unquote better than that, but it's an understanding of just because an artificial intelligence system is based on a logic uh, or reasoning model doesn't mean that logic or reasoning can't take you to a biased conclusion uh, because it's only as good as the information to which it can work off of. And if the information that it's being provided is from human designed databases, Humans have prejudice, right? We have bias. And as hard as we may try, we do not yet have machines that have agency in and of themselves that are free from our predispositions that we have provided them. So I don't know if that was easy enough to follow there, Lance, but uh, <laughs> he's just shaking his head. He's like, no, nah, no, no, no. no. I, I'm just hoping I'm out of here before they get agency because then I'm getting my eagle and sending it after the drone. <laughs> future generations that's all i got to say good luck the the fear the portentous concern would be that the law of accelerating returns applies right mm -hmm. at some point the skills that we grant to these systems and the skills that they develop in their own right based off of the learning we provide them 
may eventually provide them some degree of agency. Once they have agency, then our ability to then determine to, what they learn yeah, is far, but, far, far more complicated. Then I have to get out my hammer <laughs> and destroy the device. Uh -huh. Yeah. What if it's not living in a single device and it's you know spread out amongst the cloud? Now you told me the cloud was in a building. <laughs> Many buildings. See, that's been a big thing lately is some internet providers have been pushing, you know, if, if you want the best servers for your business, you go with us because some cloud providers, excuse me, because we have many buildings across many areas with redundancy and duplication built in so that you take down any one or two of these and you can't take down the whole system. Well, me and John Henry, we'll, we'll, John Henry defeated the, the machine the, the, with building the railroads and I will, I will defeat the AI with my hammer. I will go around and destroy all of the buildings. Uh, we will see. We will see. Where does Facebook go from here? They, they need some AI. They want the metaverse. Another one of Lance's favorites. Keep it here on The State of Us. We'll be right back. it wasn't that long ago, Lance, when Facebook seemed to be riding high, ad-driven, money-making machine humming along with a valuation as recently as September of last year that topped $1 trillion. That's, that's hard to, can you imagine being worth a trillion dollars? A company that's worth a trillion dollars. But Facebook's parent company, Meta Platforms, is today the poster child of the tech reckoning. Uh, it's had some trouble with its stock uh, getting as bad as having since that time. While the shares of all tech companies have been hammered lately, the underlying profit machines for Apple, Microsoft, Google, and Amazon suggest that they will continue to weather the current economic, regulatory, and other challenges. Meta, on the other hand, seems to be genuinely threatened in the near term by several factors that could hurt its revenue and reach. The first is aggressive regulation, new and pending from the FTC and the European Union, and perhaps even Congress. The second is the impact on its advertising model of Apple's privacy changes and the prospect that Google might be following Apple's example for its Android mobile operating system. And the third is the rapid growth of TikTok, as well as a handful of other growing competitors that are siphoning away Facebook's youngest users and challenging it for attention of its older ones. And the fourth is that Meta is making a huge bet to the tune of nearly $10 billion dollars in research and development a year on building an entirely new business for itself, the metaverse, that might not pan out. Yeah. I learned that uh, Apple was meta. Didn't know that. Well, so, Apple, so, Apple, so, so, Apple so when you're talking about working, metaverse, you're talking about the fake world that Apple's trying to create. Well, they're trying, they're trying to do their own. Right. That's separate from meta, which is a company, oh. which is what Facebook renamed itself. Gotcha. Facebook still exists as a platform, but it's a subsidiary of its parent company, which is Meta. Sounds like a con game to me. And then Meta's trying to build the metaverse, and Apple's trying to build its own metaverse. I see. Why can't, you, <laughs> why can't we just solve the problems that we have? Why People can't deal with reality, so why are we creating an escape for them? Why did people create television, Lance? We all want to escape. We all want to live in the imaginary to let to let our worries fade away. Why do you watch baseball? Because you know? that's real, man. Uh, is it? That is real. Yes, I live and die by it. It is real. <laughs> I've been to the stadiums. There they are actually, people that live and die by they, video they, games they actually and play Facebook. It. Well, and that's fake. Well, says who? Me. <laughs> but they don't say so. Well, I'm in control of my verse. <laughs> Uh, well, we all want to think so, don't there's we? There's a universe, right? You know, what, what does uni mean? <laughs> one. There's one verse. There's not meta. There's not multiple verses. Well, there actually, is, I was there say there's one <laughs> verse. Scientists are now pretty sure that the multiverse, you know, is, is a legitimate theory and that we are but one of many universes that exist. It's the only one that I know. <laughs> so therefore, therefore, therefore it's, it's all, all there is. Yep. It's all there is. <laughs> 
Uh, here's the thing, though. You want to really scare the socks until off the, of people. Until the new LED light comes on outside my house that was put up by the local electric company. And then I'm looking for the aliens to land because it is so freaking bright, just so you know. So Apple made, well, that's good. No, it's not. <laughs> Apple made. Shines into the bedroom. You can't sleep. A bunch of changes to their to their platform, right? That Im, they that Apple says improved users' privacy and specifically mm-hmm. hurt Facebook pretty heavily mm-hmm. because it drastically tamped down on the data that Facebook could collect on its users. So and, Apple and Facebook aren't the same thing? No. Oh. So- Gotcha. <laughs> Although their 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 growth, uh, Facebook has relied heavily on. I mean, especially in the early days, the iPhone to power its you know push to dominance in social media. Mm. Um, so no, they're not the same uh, by any means, but they definitely have a somewhat symbiotic, somewhat contentious relationship. Um, so. Apple made changes to its privacy policy that makes it harder for Facebook to collect data. And you might say, well, how does that affect Facebook's bottom line? Well, how does Facebook make money? By selling your attention, right? Mm -hmm. And their expertise in understanding what Lance Jackson wants, right? They learn what he wants by showing him different content, what he reacts to, what he spends time on. And then they can use that, provide that to advertisers so that they can send you these ads that are like, oh man, we're going to get him because we know he's going to like this thing. You know, we've got the data. And then Apple said, nah, we don't think you should have that much ability to access our users' data. And Facebook said, that's bad. So Facebook loses revenue. Now Google, right, who runs basically everything that's not Apple phones, right? They developed the operating system for the majority of phones that are not Apple called Android, which is like what my phone uses. They're thinking about yeah, following- Yeah, you're anti-Apple. We know that. Right. They're thinking about following in the footsteps of Apple and saying, yeah, I think we're going to do something similar. So Facebook, right? I mean, corporate wise- up, up at Meta headquarters, the alarm bells are going off. You know, this is bad news. We got trouble. <laughs> we got trouble right here in uh, Apple. River, River City. Yeah. <laughs> See, it's already been done. I've already watched this show. Why, why does my it really matter? My favorite musical. Yeah. Well, it's uh, not mine. It's my daughter's favorite. Uh, oh, it's well, good. Mine. Wait, wait, wait I, I have to ask you after the okay. show. I didn't know that. Yes. Okay. We're going to have to, I'll have to call up your daughter and we'll talk about the best musical that's graced planet Earth. So mm-hmm. anyway. Sorry, not to digress. But the point here is that why then invest so much in Can the I metaverse? stream it? They, yeah. <laughs> can <laughs> the, I watch it with a VR headset? Yes. Okay. You can step into it, Lance, oh, with wow. a VR headset. There you go. So see, what they'll develop for you is you want to go play the baseball game with the pros? Yeah. They'll put you out there. Wow. And they'll let you build the skills so that you can play with any of your favorites, even ones that are dead. You don't even need them to be alive, you know? And why not? Why not step into that world? Why, why not leave it behind? Who needs that two-dimensional screen? Lance can put the headset on, sit in his comfortable chair, and be right there with all his baseball favorite greats. Because then Talk you, to him and then speak when you to come him back, and play you with pay him. The bill. Yeah? Well, then really, why come back? Reality. Yeah. Why come back? Just stay there. <laughs> but you might say, why? When people did that on LSD, we said it was bad. <laughs> <laughs> so back in the 60s and 70s we said that was bad okay. now you're saying that this is people are making money off it and it's got endorsed by congress and it's all good uh, no i'm saying I mean, they this, want to this make is money the same off of thing that the yogis said to do when you yogis. climbed up on the mountaintop you know okay. take this pill and you can leave reality and never come back and life will be all good and we'll all live in harmony that's right well you might not be alive but you know <sighs> I, uh, to your <laughs> point of why you don't do this that you just described. So why is Meta doing all this? Meta's costly investment in new virtual and mixed reality headsets, that is ones that combine virtual reality and the real world, will yield many new opportunities to gather data on us and could even allow even more efficient ad targeting. There's, why? There's the portentousness, folks. If people are using Meta-built Headsets, the company can't be blocked by Google or mm. Apple from gathering all the user data that the law allows. Did a human find out a way to solve this problem 
or was it an artificial intelligent computer? What's more, a headset, here's what you'll love, Lance, a headset which can do everything from recognizing your body language and posture to tracking our eyes and listening to our voice would grant Meta an unprecedented amount of information about not just where we are and what we're doing, but also our moment-to-moment emotional state. So does it have the ability to listen just to our spoken voice and not all the voices in my head or just the one that makes noise? Well, it's going to hear the one that makes noise, but see, it's going to be watching your eyes, your facial expressions, the tiny crinkles, and it's going to learn using artificial intelligence what Lance is thinking and feeling at any moment when they serve him different things. And then in a metaverse, you don't know where the ads are anymore. In the real world, they're in squares, they're in rectangles. You can choose to ignore them. That's not true in the metaverse. The ad is that person across the street who isn't necessarily a real person. They're an ad. Okay. What's more, all the biometric data gathered by a headset could rapidly tell Meta's systems things like your sexual orientation, your mental health status, and sell that information to advertisers. Mm hmm. You won't see one of those on my head. <laughs> Not going to happen. Not willingly. Maybe it's already on there and it you don't know be. it. could be. It could be. You know, <laughs> I, like I said, we could be in some kid's room as an ant farm and we're just there to for their enjoyment. And when they grow up here, they're going to shake us up and we're going to all be destroyed. Just like that ant farm I had when I was little. Well, boy, folks, isn't that a portentous ending to this to this program? So why do we have this conversation today, Lance, other than to be Debbie Downer for folks? I wasn't Debbie Downer. You just finally threw it all together and I had to just bring it up, you know? It's all right. Just go take your local drug of choice and escape the metaverse and the reality of the world and not deal with reality. So, um, what is reality? What is reality? Reality is true chat <laughs> because here at true chat, we have a real mission and our mission is to educate people by providing honest, open and respectful conversations. I was honest. I don't know how respectful I was, but, uh, I might not, I might get a little bit chastised by the company here today, but you know, folks, it's just the way it is. And hopefully you enjoyed the show because it was kind of humorous. It was a little bit femur as well. Uh, but if you like it and you like dad jokes, uh, Tell your coworkers and your family that they can find us on Spotify, Overcast, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, and everywhere podcasts are found. The State of Us is available as a podcast. New episodes release Tuesday and Thursday, first thing in the morning. Those same episodes are heard on the weekends on AM and FM talk radio stations across the country. Who do you have for the win today, Lance? Um, you tried really hard. I don't know if you got it or not. <laughs> You're not willing to see. Depends not on. Not willing to hand it over. No, I mean, I'm going to ask the AI. To, I'm going to go into the metaverse and I won. Oh, uh, Because okay. I'll always win in the metaverse. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I will be undefeated in the metaverse. For the state of us, I'm Justin T. Weller. I'm Lance Jackson. Special thanks to producer Maybe. Bradley Butch. <laughs> Depends on who you ask. <laughs> Thank you all, our audience. Hopefully you're listening for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Be the change. Be sure to check out our website, thestateofus.org, for books, articles, and all the ways to tune in. Thestateofus.org.